Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. And another heavyweight news and notes mashup video today. And this one, certainly uh, a couple of deep and heavy topics. You've got one with Alexander Usyk on the situation in Ukraine, and then Fraser Clark, someone attempting some blackmail. That's a little bit later on in the video. But first, Alexander Usyk, he has cut short his visit to the United Kingdom. He had been there uh, looking to set up uh, different things with an upcoming rematch with Anthony Joshua but Usyk the unified champion has returned home with the worsening situation in Ukraine with uh, Russian troops obviously in the country fighting breaking out etc uh, you have Usyk posting to his social media you can see here on screen uh, it's in Ukrainian uh, but uh, the the, ca uh, the caption is no war uh, and as we know as well, um, the mayor of Kiev, you've got uh, Vitaly Klitschko, the former WBC champion. He has uh, publicly stated and quite regularly that he is willing to take up arms. And him and his brother Vladimir Klitschko, the former unified champion, posting an appeal online uh, regarding the situation, uh, situation with Russia, basically appealing for um, hostilities to cease. But uh, yeah, I know some people will be wondering, well, what's going to happen now with Usyk and other related matters? I think that's for an, uh, another day, given the seriousness of this ongoing situation, because clearly not a good situation at all. So I don't often comment on things outside of the wheelhouse of uh, boxing, specifically heavyweight boxing, but this is tied to the division and will have some impact. And obviously some of the players involved um, champions and former champions. So just wanted to mark that. So moving on, uh, and this is a not a related matter, but Alexander Usyk uh, responding to Tyson Fury's uh, claims that Usyk had ducked him. Obviously, this whole recent step aside deal fell apart. Uh, Tyson Fury has blamed Dillian White. Anthony Joshua and also Alexander Usyk but uh, Usyk firing back saying I never duck anybody if he wants I can fight him right now with bare knuckles in the street and it wouldn't surprise me if he would do that as well uh, moving on so some good news uh, for Philip Hergovich and the fight with uh, Zhang Jilei of China so this IBF final eliminator a purse bid has been held and you can see here the article from boxing scene so confirming that the winning bid was uh, from Matram and Wasserman uh, they both co-promote Philip Hergovich a joint bid of 650,000 so that was uh, uh, a couple of hundred thousand higher than the 410,000 from pro box promotion so this is in US dollars, uh, Hergovich will get 60% of this, so 390,000. So actually, when you consider the um, purse bid a year or so ago with Michael Hunter, it's only slightly more. So there's still not a huge amount of value in this fight, which obviously is a reason a lot of these heavyweights have invented injuries sometimes to get out of it. That's the reason they're not taking the fight. They don't want to take short money for a dangerous and risky fight and fighter in Filip Hergovic. So Zhang getting uh, $260,000 of that wedge. Uh, and this is obviously for uh, Zhang, 38 years old. He's got to hit the go button. This is make or break for him. Hergovic is, what, 29 at the moment. Uh, he can come again if he loses. But obviously heading into this one, he will be the favorite. So I like this fight. And obviously once it's uh, officially confirmed, day venue all that sort of stuff I'd imagine it will be in the United States we'll talk about it more on to a strange situation as outlined by Fraser Clark on a social media so someone's been trying to blackmail him so he says haha so some fool messaged me today trying to blackmail me threatening to, sh to show all future opponents this video we'll get to it and share it with all social media profiles so here it is it's 2009 ish i think cardi b eat your heart out feel free to abuse this guy and he has a, a link to the, the person that was obviously um, trying to blackmail him but stepping through this so someone had approached him saying obviously any opponent you have will get the video too this is quite embarrassing and rep is instantly tarnished bear in mind that this is a ghost account okay I've, that's gone a bit too fast for me to actually get to but anyway trying to blackmail him and Fraser Clark obviously back and forth with him but um, getting to the next 
clip oh, so I can get back to some of what was saying. Uh, bear in mind this is a ghost account. My main account has nearly the same followers as you block me again and it's going out. But Fraser Clark um, proactively putting this out. And actually, I mean, it's a bit silly, the video, but it, is it really anything that's in here? It is. It's just him dancing away. Someone's obviously recorded it. Don't know who it was. Um, girlfriend, partner, whatever at the time. Friend, who knows? Uh, it's not, you know, it's, it's a bit you know weird the dance and everything but how would anyone ever think that this is um some sort of blackmailable offense bizarre i don't think the guy was that smart but anyway i think fraser clark's done the right thing go out publicly out yourself in terms of this you know situation the guy looks like a loser he looks a little silly for the dance video but i mean we're going back was that 13 years 13 years so what would he have been like 19 years old at the time i mean come on whoever that guy is get a life uh moving on so you've got the upcoming fight on march the 5th in uh, dearborn michigan between robertson sims and moses johnson johnson an unbeaten prospect so this is a dimitri salita card so of this upcoming fight so you've got robert sims talking about his training camps we'll skip those comments he says i have too much experience for him I've already beaten some undefeated fighters and guys with every style you will see. I don't think he will have anything new for me. He's got a lot of knockouts, but he hasn't had a lot of tough opposition. I'm not saying he's not a good fighter, but he hasn't been through a war yet to show what he really has. And I'll just sort of uh, stop there with this, because it's quite a big quote, actually. But getting to Moses Johnson, he says, it's nothing personal, but somebody has to win and it's going to be me. I'm going to be there to put the work in and continue my winning streak. But I wish him the best after that. And uh, you have uh, Dimitri Salita saying Johnson versus Sims is a bona fide top level crossroads fight between an upcoming undefeated contender and a proven world class upset artist in Robert Sims. So maybe that's slightly over egging things. I'm not sure that Sims is uh, sort of really on the radar for most boxing fans. He's outside the top 50 in my view, but uh, continues. This is a great fight, which tops off a sensational card, yada, yada, yada. So that, that'll be something I'll be interested in. It is going to be broadcast, I believe, on Salita Promotions YouTube, which, you know, look, if it is good action, I mean, I think this is a well-matched fight. Uh, just to remind you before we get to a couple of other little things. So this week, obviously, Fabio Wardley, he returns facing Daniel Martz. Here is a couple of uh, or a couple of snaps from the media day session. So obviously, this card is going to be on DAZN. Also featuring on that same card, I don't know if it's on the televised portion or if this is on like the YouTube bit, uh, Dempsey McKean versus Ariel Bracamonte. So he says the hard work's been done, finishing touches, and then it's time for business. So here with his trainer, Tony Sims. So at the moment, uh, McKean is uh, basing himself full-time in the United Kingdom, second of a three-fight deal with Matchroom. Hopefully they're going to match him tougher for the third fight because uh, you've got uh, Don Hainsworth, Ariel Brock Bracamonte. You know, it's not great for the first couple of fights considering he was fighting at a higher level in Australia against the likes of Johnny Rice, for example. Uh, also this weekend on uh, Sky, uh, you have uh, the boxer card and that features Jay McFarlane versus Nick Campbell. I better pause these before I get clipped for, uh, you know, running too much of their uh, content. So, you know, Nick Campbell, six foot seven, the former um, rugby player, Jay McFarlane who sort of bounced around cruiserweight and also heavyweight uh, this is for the scottish title and they had a post the other day saying it's the first time 71 years it's been contested so make it that what you will also this weekend uh, ukrainian heavyweight prospect uh, igor shevardutsky he'll be facing the uh, battle axe kevin johnson this is in germany at the ec boxing gym and uh, also a heavyweight pro debut for the Australian Lopeti Huni. So Tasman fighters are posting here. Lopeti Huni makes his long-awaited professional heavyweight debut uh, tomorrow night on the Gold Coast. We're all pumped for this one, and we wish Lopeti and Team Huni all the best. And if that name seems familiar, yes, it is a brother of Justice Huni. Uh, the up-and-coming heavyweight prospect who obviously is one of the best rolling around sort of um of the prospects coming through anyway what do you make of it all drop a comment loud and often hit like hit subscribe follow me on twitter boxing underscore squared i'm out